Hi. Today I'd like to talk about parts of an argument and how to recognize them. Arguments have three parts. The first two of these parts are types of claims that arguments contain. These claims are usually expressed as separate sentences. The conclusion of an argument is the claim being argued for. It is what you are trying to prove or show to be true by giving your argument. The premises of an argument are the claims being argued from. They are the evidence or support your argument gives in favor of the conclusion. The third part is more abstract. It is the inferential link between the premises and the conclusion. We will also call it the argument's inference. The inferential link is harder to recognize because it usually is not explicitly stated in a separate sentence. Often the inferential link is an unspoken connection between the claims being stated. More about this later. To read and write arguments well, you must learn to identify what is being argued for, the conclusion, and how it is being argued for, the premises. Consider this example from Aristotle. We do not choose everything because of something else, for if we do, it will go on without limit, so that desire will prove to be empty and futile. In this passage, Aristotle's first sentence states what he is arguing for, that is, the conclusion of his argument that there are some things we desire for their own sake and not just for the sake of other things. And then he supports this conclusion by saying that this conclusion being true is the only way for us to avoid the absurd idea that our desires are unlimited. We might use the following form to represent Aristotle's argument. Premise 1. If everything were desired for the sake of something else, then desire would be unlimited. Premise 2. But desire cannot be unlimited, for then it would be impossible for us ever to be satisfied. Conclusion, therefore, there must be some things we desire for their own sake. In representing an argument this way, the horizontal line under premise 2 is like the line above the solution to an arithmetical problem. It distinguishes what we get out of the argument, outputs, from what goes into it, inputs. So how do we recognize the conclusion? The conclusion of the argument is its logical output, its terminal point, where our minds end up when we finish following the argument's reasoning. It concludes the argument in a logical sense. Sometimes you can find the conclusion by its location in the argument. Often the conclusion comes at the end of the argument. And that's why you should vote for candidate X for mayor. Sometimes the conclusion comes at the beginning of the argument. In this essay, I will give three reasons why Shakespeare was secretly Catholic. But sometimes the conclusion can come in the middle of the argument, sandwiched between two premises. Engineering requires a lot of math courses, so Frank will never be an engineer. Also, he's lazy and unmotivated. So the location is no guarantee of finding the conclusion. We need another method to fall back on sometimes. Writers often use indicator words to identify their argument's conclusion or premises. These are like signs or tags that label a premise or conclusion. In the argument above, Aristotle uses the word for to label his premise. We do not choose everything because of something else, the conclusion, for the reason that if we do, it will go on without limit. That's the premise. Here the word for is an indicator that labels the premise. In the engineering example I gave, the conclusion Frank will never be an engineer was labeled by the indicator word so. Engineering requires math, that's a premise, so for this reason, Frank will never be an engineer, that's the conclusion. Here, the word so is an indicator word that labels the conclusion. Common premise indicators include because, for, since, as, given that, and assuming that. Common conclusion indicators, therefore, thus, so, consequently, and hence. When writing your own arguments, you should use indicator words to guide the reader through your reasoning. When reading arguments, you should look for indicator words to identify which claims are premises and which claims are conclusions. The last way to identify the conclusion of an argument is by figuring out where the argument as a whole is headed, the logical flow of its claims taken all together. This method can be helpful when there are no indicator words. So here's one example. Lisa is angry with Dalton, 
she hasn't spoken to him all day, and she went out of her way to avoid him at lunch. There are no indicator words here to tell us which of these three claims is the conclusion and which are premises. Assuming for the moment that this is an argument, we should ask ourselves which of these claims can be proved by the other two? Or to reverse the question, which two of these claims are evidence for believing the third claim? When we look at all three claims together, we should see that the first claim, Lisa is angry with Dalton, is the conclusion. The other two claims about Lisa's behavior toward Dalton give us reasons to believe that she is angry with him. Note also that there is an unstated premise at work here too. We need to know that not speaking to a person and avoiding that person are signs of being angry with them. More on that later. Here's another example. Too much sugar is bad for your teeth. It causes cavities. There are only two claims here, so which one proves or could prove the other? We can consider both options by putting a conclusion indicator between them. Too much sugar is bad for your teeth, therefore it causes cavities. Hmm. Let's try putting a premise indicator between them instead. Too much sugar is bad for your teeth because it causes cavities. That sounds more natural, and it better reflects the logical flow of the sentence and the relationship between eating sugar and getting cavities. Because is a premise indicator word, which means that it causes cavities is the premise. That means that too much sugar is bad for your teeth is the conclusion. So that's been a, my quick walkthrough about the parts of an argument, premise, conclusion, and inference, and three different ways of recognizing conclusions by location, by indicator words, and by logical flow. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.